Hey, Weather Warriors, hope you're having a great holiday season. I wanted to bring your attention towards the 28th through New Year's Day, where a potential cross-country storm system could occur and potentially a major winter storm for parts of the country. We're going to go over track, timing, location, and much more in this episode of Weather Decoded TV. All right, guys, let's get right into it. We're going to look at the jet stream first. And I'm going to kind of show you what's going on, and then we'll look at the precipitation amounts and, and the precipitation at the surface. But before we begin, I invite you to subscribe below if you like detailed educational weather forecast breakdowns, just like this long range forecast. Hit those bell notifications so you get the forecast right hot off the press. And we're going to get right into it here. So we're looking at the 28th at 1 p.m. You see this little dip here in the jet stream? Well, that's indicative of a little uh, wave in the atmosphere, a trough, and that can enhance the potential for a storm system right out ahead of it. You're probably gonna get a low pressure system at the surface where you get these black lines to diverge and that, that wind to sweep in. Well, what's that doing? Well, it's stretching air out up in the upper levels when you get stretching like that. And air at the surface has to vacate that or fill out that vacated region. That creates a low at the surface. It siphons air into it. So that's something we're looking at in California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, New Mexico. And as we head towards the 29th and, and 30th, this blows up really strong. Look at that divergence and wind out there in the plains. Something really interesting that could happen here in the plains as we head towards the 29th and 30th. This eventually moves into the Midwest and the Northeastern United States. So it's something we're going to have to watch all the way from California to the northeastern United States, north to south. Something we're going to look at, and this is important far in advance to really understand the rest of this uh, video here, is the upper level height anomalies. You see, we're going to go out to around now. You see this blue area right here out in California. This is lower than average height anomalies. Well, where you get those little areas, that's where you get cooler air and you typically get storm systems just out ahead of these things. And where you get the reds, that's ridging. So typically warmer and calmer activity. Now, when we're this far out in advance, these are the types of maps we use. Track, timing, snowfall amounts, and the location will change between now and then. We'll, we'll go over it in the video here, but you just gotta keep in mind those things will change because we're still a week or so out. But the thing that we look for in terms of high confidence is the signals and we use this map to look at the signals and uh, right now there is very high likelihood of a strong storm system tracking from the west to the east coast particularly the central united states here as you can see this move into parts of california nevada utah or uh, uh, new mexico arizona Colorado and eventually look what happens here as we head towards the plains. This is the key thing. You see this height rises these this ridging starts to really build out ahead of this thing and then uh, this really uh, deepens and closes off a classic little storm system good divergence. You're gonna get some warm air moist air streaming out of the Gulf out ahead of this thing. This is a classic signal of a classic plains significant winter storm. Past several runs of the models, multiple model runs have been showing this signal, the ridge trough axis with a, a nice little gradient out there in the plains. So the likelihood of a strong plains roaming or a strong storm system roaming the plains around the 29th, 30th, 31st period uh, is really beginning to increase. And that's why I decided to make this video. As you head towards uh, the 30th and then New Year's Eve now, it moves eastward that that storm system still maintains itself, but it does weaken as it gets to the East Coast a little bit. Sometimes there could be some reorganization. We'll have to watch that. There's some indication of that, like right there. But overall, it, it is, does weaken a little bit as it moves towards the coast. We're going to go over one more of these upper level maps. Then we'll look at precipitation and amounts here. Uh, you can see this is the upper level of vorticity, and this is kind of measuring the lift and the spin in the upper levels. When you get a lot of this, well, you get a stronger response at the surface, which essentially means stronger lift at the surface. You can see uh, at the 28th here, 1 p.m., moving into California. And then uh, as we head towards around the 30th here, it really strengthens in the plains. 
And then the 31st and the 1st into New Year's, it, it still maintains itself a little bit, but not quite as strong. It's more of a linear look. That would indicate more of something like the Christmas storm, where it's more of just a cold front with rain ahead of it and snow. Farther north, we see this closed off piece of energy. When you get winter storms, the area, if you're going to get snow, is near that closed off area. So south of that, typically, it's a little bit too warm. Sometimes you can get post-frontal snow, but unlikely to be a ton. We're going to go over actual precipitation amounts. We're looking at the, the old GFS, then we'll go to the Euro. And I just want to show you guys what's going on here. This is the 28th. You can see snow moving into northern western California. By the time we get to the 29th here, it's moving into Nevada. Well, the 28th into the 29th. Nevada, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and even parts of Wyoming. Some of this area just hasn't seen a whole lot of snow yet. But this could be the first opportunity for some snow, especially in the upper elevations. But even some of the lower elevations with enough cold air here, you can see uh, even snow down into Arizona here. This is the 29th, around 1 a.m. But look what happens. As we head towards the 29th at 1 p.m., you see these, high, uh, these thickness lines. This is kind of measuring a temperature gradient in the atmosphere. And that 540 line is typically where your rain to snow line is, usually east of the Rockies. And you can see a cold front kind of out here and uh, your, your warm, moist advection occurring out ahead of it where you see those thickness lines intersect perpendicular with those pressure lines. So that's an indication of warm, moist air, warm advection feeding the storm system. And you can see here's your 540 line. That's your average, kind of your average freezing line. You know, another th good thing to use is that 850 zero degree line, negative four degrees Celsius, 700 line. But this is a good area to, to measure that. And the, the issue with this system, with this type of look, that north to south look, is you could get some sleet and freezing rain uh, mixing in with this thing. And so that's going to be a big question mark. Where does that set up, the sleet and freezing rain? Because that could significantly change snowfall amounts. I've seen this uh, look on several models, several model runs. So that'll be a big question. Now, you're probably wondering, down here in Oklahoma or Texas, no snow? Well, again, it's a little bit too far out to talk about the specific location, but all models have been showing a powerful storm crossing the plains here. The European is much stronger for parts of Oklahoma and Kansas in terms of snowfall, so we'll go over that in a second. Uh, so there is some, in, uh, some uncertainty in exact location, but as we head towards the 30th here at 1 a.m., New Year's, uh, or the day before New Year's Eve, you can see that nice cold front, just like a scorpion tail there. Could be some severe weather out ahead of it. We'll have to watch that out in Texas, Arkansas, and Louisiana with that type of look. At least a chance for thunderstorms. But as you can see, as you go farther and farther north, eventually it hits that wall, that 540 line of cold air and turns to snow. And right where it hits, hits that wall, that's usually where you get the heaviest snow. Will there be thunder snow? It's too far out to tell. But yeah, yeah, this type of look would probably indicate that with a very strong batch of uh, lift out in the uh, I-80 corridor right along that range of snow line. Again, the Europeans a little bit farther south, so t track timing and amounts will change. But significant snowfall, a classic comma head type of appearance with that scorpion tail from all the way down from Texas all the way up to Minnesota. This is, again, uh, the 30th at 1 a.m. As we head towards uh, the 30th, we'll go to the 30th around 7 p.m., that low kind of slows down, shears out, weakens a little bit. Uh, but you can see that big wall of precipitation moving eastward, and then that rain, sleet, freezing rain line goes into Michigan, and then snow out in the northern Midwest into the Great Lakes region. But again, we'll have to watch the track timing and location of this. This could move shift a little bit. As you can see, as we head towards... The uh, New Year's Eve into New Year's Day, it kind of re-strengthens a little bit out here. We get probably another piece of upper-level energy that gets kind of siphoned into it. And, uh, you know, that, that delivers a decent wave of precipitation for the East Coast. Look at that, some sleet and snow and freezing rain breaking out for the interior far northeastern United States, the southeast portions of Canada into the Great Lakes region as we head towards New Year's Eve. And then New Year's Day, it moves to the north and re-strengthens again. It's all the way down to a 979 again. So this is something we're really going to have to watch 
for the northeastern United States, that's where the big question mark is. There seems to be some very solid consistency at a strong pressure system with the potential for a major winter storm here in the plains. But the big question will be the northeast. Right now, it appears to be a warm uh, event. Uh, but if this tracks any more west, or just due eastward and continues that strengthening, we're going to have to watch that. You can see a very powerful system now for Canada during this time on New Year's Day. So that'll track eastward, eventually shear out. And as it shears out, you'll get, again, some wraparound snow behind it, some light snow. But overall, a pretty interesting looking system. As we head towards the European computer model, you'll see what I mean here. Here it is, California, Utah. Nevada, probably the southern portions, into Colorado. And with the European, it uh, is much farther south and much stronger with this system. Even stronger than that GFS run we were talking about. You can see a way, in also multiple ways, a wave of precipitation moves north. You probably have an upper level piece of vorticity churning out some uh, lift, and you'll get some precipitation up there in Kansas, Nebraska, Iowa. So that wave moves through. And then as we head towards the 30th here, the main low pressure system kicks out and delivers probably another decent wave of precipitation from Iowa down to Oklahoma, Kansas, Nebraska, all the way up to Minnesota and Wisconsin. Now you're probably wondering, what are the mounts going to be like? We'll go over that in a second. This moves to the north and kind of stalls out in Iowa. And then you'll see some more development. Here's another low developing off the coast with this upper level piece of energy. This one dies out. So that's something we're definitely going to have to watch. I mean, I've seen it happen before where you'll get a low, secondary little low further east and it really quickly rapid, uh, rapidly increases in a very small area and gives people some intense snow fall. Right now, that doesn't appear to be the case, but uh, it's definitely something I'm watching out there for the northeastern United States. Now, you're probably wondering, what are amounts like? Well, you know, I, I know we're all weather enthusiasts on here. And, you know, we can, uh, a lot of you guys look at the models. But the European is forecasting three feet of snow for much of the plains. Now, do I think that's going to happen? I'll show you here. And I'll show you why they don't, you know, we don't post snowfall amounts too far in advance. Let's go out to uh, the 24-hour snowfall amounts. And uh, I'll show you what the Euro's showing here. And, uh, whoops, those orange areas you're seeing down there, that, that's close to three feet that the Euro is showing. Now, will this happen? The odds are no. However, when you get these classic winter storms to roll up the plains, it's not uncommon to see in the maximum area somewhere in that 12 to 18 inch range. Now, will, will that, where will that occur? I mean, it certainly is going to change from what this map shows. Okay, we're just looking at the signal right now. We'll definitely be making more updates on the actual amounts in the future. But this is just for fun. Again, things will change. But uh, in my experience with these types of winter storms, you rarely, I've rarely ever seen three feet of snow with a classic plains winter storm. Sometimes you'll get, again, 12 to 18 inches in the maximum area, but rarely do you get three feet. And then the other thing is the models around this time period, around that week time period, sometimes really overdo the amounts in the maximum area. I mean, I've seen this happen with almost every classic Plains winter storm with the European, the GFS, and even the Canadian showing three, four, sometimes five feet, and you only end up getting about a foot, maybe 18 inches in the maximum area. So I'd expect that to come down. I'm not saying it's you know, for sure going to come down or go up, but I expect that to come down probably closer to a foot or so in the maximum area. Uh, but again, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of amounts and location at the moment. Then if you look at the GFS, it's a lot farther north, probably more realistic with the actual amounts, but a little bit farther north. And you can see it's, it's whoops, I'll go back. It's painting. Now, it, it is painting the Christmas storm, so you got to take that off. And if you take that off, it's probably closer to 12 to 18 inches in the maximum area. And you can see the maximum snow swath is much farther north, going from northern Nebraska into parts of southern Minnesota into Wisconsin and southeast Canada. And then eventually maybe some more snow out there in, in, in parts of southeast Canada in the interior northeast. And then you look again at the GFS here. 
or the European here, and we'll go back and show that. And you can kind of see that second wave in Southeast Canada and Northeastern United States, nothing significant, but you can see how much of a difference there is. However, again, like I've been saying, the signal is there for a potential powerful winter storm. So we'll be definitely making more updates on videos like this, guys. Make sure to stay tuned, hit those bell notifications if you like videos like this, detailed breakdowns. And again, as we get closer, we'll definitely be going into more details with the system. Um, maybe one other thing we'll look at is temperatures behind this. And then we'll wrap it up, hit those uh, bell notifications, subscribe, share this with a friend if you like this content. And we'll go over one more thing here. This is uh, around the 30th in the morning. You can see temperatures behind this thing, not overly cold, but definitely down into the teens for much of the uh, plains here, maybe even single digits in some areas. So it won't be, you know, a massive Arctic outbreak or anything at the moment, but it will be pretty cold. Obviously, this is January. Everyone's used to it. So nothing uh, terrible, but uh, there will be a threat for a powerful storm. So stay tuned, guys. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you soon.